morning, everybody. Let's go ahead and stand to our feet. We're here to worship him together today. I can see the clouds rolling. I can feel the winds, they try to shake me. I will not be moved. My feet are on the rock. Come on, put your hands together. So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our Come feet on. are on the rock Charts a solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Our feet are on the rock On Christ a solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand So stomp your feet and clap your hands Set the focus on where our feet are planted on Christ, who is our solid rock. So God, we lift you up in this place right now. Ask that you touch our hearts. When I'm in my head, you're just getting started. When I hit a wall, you just walk through. When I face a mountain, you are the maker, so it's God alone. When I'm out of faith, you are still faithful. When I'm at my worst, you are still good. In all of my questions, you are the answer, it all points to you. The God of the breakthrough When I'm breaking down You'll be working a way through And there's no way out This one thing I know You're still on your throne So whatever I'm feeling I still got a reason to praise
given that praise that he deserves. He's here with us this morning. So God, we just step into whatever you have for us. No matter what we face, we know that you're there with us. But you're always going to be there. This is a house of worship. This is a place of praise. Come on, let's sing it. Where every demon trembles, where we proclaim your name. This is a house of healing. Sing it out together. Just speak it. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. So we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. As we sing these words, let's just make them a prayer and a declaration over this place today. There's resurrection power. Come on, speak it. Your blood runs through our veins. Your kingdom triumphs over. Even the cold is great. Come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. So we bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is house of miracles. Come on, sing it again. We sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. And we bring everything to your feet, Lord Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. 
Jesus, come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. We bring everything to the feet of Jesus. Everything in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. So we sing, come alive in the name of Jesus. Come alive in the name of Jesus. This is a house of miracles. good, the bad, the ugly. God, we place it at your feet right now. God, I just want to lift you up in this place. During the song, we often say, sing this out as a prayer or declare it in this place. And sometimes it's easier to just sing a song. But we have to remember what we're doing, why we're singing, who we're singing to. We're not here to sing to you guys. We're here to worship with you. We're here to lift up the name of Jesus. And in Philippians 2, 9 through 11, it says, Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's what we're doing today. We're lifting up the name of Jesus. We serve a God that's above everything else that we encounter. No matter what the problem is, the circumstance, the feelings you have inside, God's bigger. And we're created in in his image. So we lift him up here in this place right now. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And God, we just ask that you would touch our hearts. God, that you would use us in this place today. I'm calling on the God, Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opens up the I need you now to do the same thing for me. For me, for Come on, let's me. just sing together to him. Oh God. 
Almighty river, come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. Come and fill me again. God, we ask that you would do just that. You would come and fill us again. Each and every morning when we wake up, we ask that your presence would be there. We invite you, Holy Spirit, into every aspect of our lives. That you would just take over and we'd be able to walk in step with you. Thank you for time in your presence today and the privilege that it is to lift you up and to give you glory. We ask that you would just continue to touch our hearts throughout the service. Let us hear exactly what you want us to hear and exactly what we need to hear today and that you would just touch and change our hearts. We love you so much. In Jesus' name we all said, amen. You guys can go ahead and be seated. Just stick to the plan and we'll be fine. We've practiced. We've worked hard. We're ready. We just got to have faith. Yeah, let's go, tribe! Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was not expecting this. But we can do it? We can do it. Um, I think our best option is to split the course into sections. Did you guys know that the last challenge was going to be an obstacle course? Negative! We should have practiced. You know what? Shoulda, woulda, coulda. We can't do anything about it now. We just gotta have good attitudes. We gotta do what we can. And so we're just gonna, we're gonna split it up, okay? Abigail, why don't you take the slide, the tube slide? I don't do well with enclosed oh, spaces. Oh, 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 I'll do it. Okay, I'll do it. good, good. Caleb, you feel good about monkey bars? Have you seen these guns? <laughs> okay. Abigail, how familiar are you with a teeter cup? Familiar. Okay, okay, you got that. And Brittany, can you do the final climb? Can do. Why didn't we practice, guys? I told you we should have practiced. You know what? We're going to get creamed. Yeah. That's all there is to it. Zazal Tribe survived every challenge, and for that, they are the 2022 Adventure Island Survivor Champions. Yeah! Let's go! Yay! How'd they win? Well, they practiced, for one thing. They worked hard. And they were ready. Hi guys, Roberta here, and I am so happy that you are joining us for church this morning. Thank you for choosing to hop online and be with us this morning. And maybe this is your first time watching with us online or virtually, we wanna know about it. So if you are new here, all you have to do is click the I'm new here option that should pop up on your screen any moment now, or you can check out the NAS app and select the I'm new here option so we can get connected, get to know you, and we have a small gift for you. So make sure you let us know that you're new here. Now you might be asking, Roberta, what is this app that you're talking about? You have to get the NAS app. The NAS app is a great resource and a great tool for you to use all throughout the week. You'll get updates, notifications, access to the Bible, and you can prepare for Sunday morning services. So make sure you check out the NAS app. Go to the nas.church slash app and download it today. And something else really awesome that you can do with the NAS app is you can give back to God. Give back to God a portion of what He has given to you because it really is His, isn't it? And ministry can happen because of your giving, your support, your tithe, your offering, your treasure. 
So make sure you pray about where God is speaking to you to give back and make an impact and help make ministry happen here at the Nash Church. You can check out all of the various different ways that you can give back to God right there on the screen right now. So make sure you check them out. Okay, now I wanna take just a couple of quick minutes to tell you everything that's happening in the life of our church and we're gonna start with forward. You've heard it before, whatever your next step is, make sure your first step is forward. Forward is an awesome opportunity for you to not only get to know more about our church, but meet some staff, ask some questions, and figure out what your next step is. Get connected and get plugged in. Forward is available to you in person, but also online via Zoom. It happens the first three Sundays of every month. And so we're having a forward today. Make sure you let us know that you're interested. You can learn more and let us know that you want to come to forward at the nas.church slash forward. We are so excited for Camp NAS VBS. You guys, it starts tomorrow. We are going to Survivor Adventure Island. It's gonna be awesome. And don't worry if you haven't signed up yet, there is still time to sign up your children. And also, maybe you wanna volunteer. You can let us know that you're interested in volunteering and there's still time to donate because your donations help make VBS Week possible. So again, Camp NAS VBS starts this week and you can learn more and sign up at the nas.church slash VBS. Well, summer is here and that means for us here at the NAS, summer hours. So summer hours for Wednesday night midweek started last week and we're gonna meet a little bit earlier on Wednesday nights for midweek. Our groups and our classes and our Bible studies, we're gonna meet from 6.30 to 7.45 again on midweek Wednesdays and we're doing that because we're super pumped to partner with the City of Grove City again for community outdoor movie nights. Everything kicks off for outdoor movies on June 22nd. You can learn more about movie nights at the nas.church slash movie nights, but come a little bit earlier for some fun and activities at 7.30 and movies will start at 8 p.m. We look forward to seeing you for outdoor movie nights. All right, thanks guys. That's all I have for today. Let's go ahead and prepare our hearts to hear the word of the Lord. more thing I got to tell you real quick, and that is, um, oops, I'm already out of time. One of the things I need to tell you is uh, summer hours are happening here at the NAS. And so on Wednesday evenings, we begin at 630 now during the summer with the exception of this week, because this week is Camp NAS VBS. But next week, uh, we'll start back at 630, because beginning June 22nd, uh, we start summer at the movies here at the NAS, and so we're, we're partnering again with the city of Grove City, and so on Wednesday nights, beginning June 22nd, you can come and uh, go out by the sand volleyball courts. There'll be a huge LED screen, great movies going on. You can even order food from the cafe, and they will deliver it directly to you, so there you've got all of your summer uh, evening meals taken care of on Wednesday nights for the summer. It's just a great way to have some pizza, hang out, and enjoy some movies here with our community. We're starting week two of our new series in the book of Exodus, and I pray that your hearts and your minds are open to hear from God. The God who spoke to Abraham and the God that spoke to Moses is the same God that speaks to us today. So would you prepare your hearts to hear from the Lord this morning? Thank you so much for joining us 
And we are thrilled that you're here in person or maybe you're watching online. My name is John and I'm the outreach and sports pastor here. I'm excited to be sharing with you today. But before I get started, there's been a lot of buzz in our community uh, this last couple of days. And we want to take a moment and uh, celebrate what happened yesterday for our uh, local Grove City High School baseball team. Uh, finished runners up in the state division one tournament. How awesome is that for those young men? That was fantastic. Yeah, really, really cool. You know, some of their coaches attend here, some of the families attend here, and uh, we want to say congratulations to them. Uh, what a special moment in uh, Grove City history. As a Grove City baseball alumni, I think that was pretty cool as well. Uh, it's great to see a community rally around things, right? And here we are looking at this stage, and we are excited for VBS. It was almost a little glimpse of the Church Mouse Praise House because all our musicians look like puppets behind the sets, their heads popping. <laughs> up there. It looked like George was over here <laughs> sitting in a boat playing the acoustic guitar today. Uh, but isn't it great to be a part of a place that rallies around bringing the message of Jesus Christ to all ages? And we're excited for the fun that's going to happen and for the God moments that are going to take place as well this week. Well, last week, Pastor Dale uh, opened us up here in our series in the book of Exodus, and he shared on the story of Moses as a young boy being placed in the basket, and man, he really tackled some prevalent uh, everyday conversation topics, and I appreciated uh, his thoughtfulness, his prayer and preparation. If you didn't get a chance to see that sermon last week, I want to encourage you to do that. You can go on Facebook, you can watch it on our YouTube channel, connect with that and find out where we are. But we are going to move out of chapters one and two in the book of Exodus, and we're looking at our main character, Moses. And Moses here in chapter three is going to have a lot of life that has spanned from last week's sermon to this week's message. And maybe for some of you, you would say, I've had a lot of life, Pastor John, that's happened here in the last week. Well, for Moses, we're going to span about 80 years, okay? A little background to the breakdown and historical understanding of Moses' life. It usually divides his life, uh, biblical scholars will say, in three Segments. He has the first 40 years of his life, which are centered around Pharaoh's palace and his time growing up in Egypt. He goes through some challenges there, learning his identity uh, as not being Egyptian, even though that's how he was raised. And then he goes through this period of questioning and wondering and leads him through some conflict and some trials that he runs and escapes from that. It leads into what they call the second 40 years of his life, which is the desert dwelling. He runs uh, from Egypt, goes into the desert and finds uh, a family, a wife. He starts uh, becoming a shepherd for his father-in-law's sheep. And in that period of time, uh, we're going to find chapter 3 picks up then because the last 40 years of his life are what we call the wandering in the wilderness. He moves in the second period of his life, the end of that, to go back and free the Israelites from Egypt, and then he leads them out into the wilderness. So we are spanning from last week to this week 80 years. So if you felt like life happened a lot for you from last week to this week, it probably wasn't 80 years, despite the gray hair you found this week. Uh, under these lights, I can't see it at all. You look great. So thank you so much for joining us today. Now you know a little bit of the background. Let's dig into God's Word together today. I'm going to be reading in Exodus chapter 3. We'll start at verse 1, and I'm going to be using the NLT version as we break this up today. Follow along. It's, it'll come up on the screen. It says, one day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. And so the passage that we're looking at today takes place around this area called Midian. And I gave you the breakdown in years for Moses, but let me give you a little bit of the history of events that have happened that find Moses here in Midian. Moses, as a young boy we learned last week, was rescued and taken into uh, Pharaoh's palace 
where he was then adopted and raised. And Moses faces a lot of moments of trials and confusion that span from when he was adopted to this point of finding himself in Midian now. Moses goes on to be raised in a palace full of riches to now find himself removed from those in a place much more spare and, and scattered, more ruins and desert and dismay. He finds himself in a bit of a personal identity crisis. He goes through this period of his young adult life where he starts questioning who he is, where he comes from, where do I belong, where do I fit in? And this is something that he has still wrestled with even to this point leading to Midian. We find that the poor choices of his youth have caught up to him, that he had obtained this reputation, that he was so bothered by he wanted to avoid, to escape, and it's now led him to flee everything he's known, his family, his history, his upbringing, to lead him to a place now where he's running from his past and he's trying to find solace in the midst of being a shepherd. And as I got into this, I started to think about what this Midian place was for Moses and how maybe for some of you who have come in today to hear this message listening online would say, Pastor John, I could kind of relate. I can connect to a Midian place. There's a reputation of my past. There's things that I've done that I don't care to associate with. I'm not proud of. I've tried to run from it. I've tried to distance myself. Maybe for some of you, the upbringing of your youth brought a lot of questions, uncomfortableness or, or some insecurities that has led you to a question of who you are. Where's your place in this world? Maybe for others of you, you've lost family ties or friend circles. You've seen a change in your income to be depleted as it was for Moses. And I wanna tell you, in the midst of Midian is when God shows up for Moses. If you would say, Pastor, I can relate and connect to the trials and struggles that Moses has had in his past, sounds a whole lot like my story. I want to tell you, God desires to speak just in the same way to you today. God has a message for you today, so I pray that you are in a posture to receive that word. Will you bow your heads with me? God, I ask now, as before we dig any further into this chapter, that you will have our attention for those who would say that they find themselves in the middle of questions and difficulties and challenges from their past, trying to avoid that from defining their future. God, that you will show up today in this service and through your Holy Spirit, God, may you speak so clearly the love and mercy and grace that is extended as you call each and every one of us today in Jesus' name, amen. So this is where Moses finds himself. He finds himself as a foreigner. His life hasn't shaped out the way he would expect it to have been. And this is something we know he's wrestling with so much because even though he's now found a wife, he's found a new home, he still is wrestling with this because we see he names his very first son the name Gershom. Gershom is not a very common name. Many of you know my wife and I, we named both of our boys with the letter G, and Gershom was not one we considered. <laughs> Gershom itself means that I have been a foreigner in a foreign land. The name of his son is proof that he wrestles with his identity, with his calling, and what he is, where he is at now is not anywhere that he feels is comfortable or right for his life. Can you imagine him opening up the door in the backyard? Hey, foreigner in a foreign land, come inside, get ready for bed. It's just an awkward name. It's just a weird place that he finds himself in. And it's cool to see that God still shows up in the midst of that. Because even though this isn't where Moses would have placed himself or his life at this time, God provides him with something in, in the middle of Midian, which isn't full of earthly riches, but rather a spiritual community to invest and connect with. You see, his father-in-law, Jethro, is a priest, and he becomes a mentor in the middle of this moment in Moses' life. 
And as a mentor, Jethro starts showing Moses what it means to worship and where they worship at Mount Sinai. In the middle of that, Jethro starts showing him what it means to be a man, but also a spiritual head of his home. He starts showing Moses what it means to be a a follower of their God, a true believer. And for Moses, this is pivotal in his life because what happens is Jethro is mentoring him to start seeing the God moments that are happening around him, the God sightings as we call them. And for many of you here, even though you may be in the midst of some challenges and the world is changing and the things that fill your mind, the concerns, the uncomfortableness of society, I want to remind you the importance of taking time for the God sightings, to recognize the things that aren't on the news, the things that aren't in the national media are the real life ways that God is still working, still moving, and still communicating with people today. That's why we celebrated last Sunday. Last Sunday where there's baptisms, where there's baby dedications. As a staff, we have a practice every Monday in in our staff prayer times to have God sighting moments where we ask the staff to start to share ways where they've seen God move and work in their ministries or in our community, in our areas of influence. And it's an awesome time because after the celebrations last week with all the different families that are up here, with all the lives that are changed and people taking the steps in their faith of baptism, our staff gets to share the different touch points along the way of how they've seen God work in this family that's brought them to this moment, how they've seen God show up and be real to a person who is now being baptized. And what an awesome celebration that is. Don't lose sight of how God is still working. And allow yourself to be open to see what God is doing. And so this is the setting then for our story here as Moses observes a rarity, an anomaly per se, but God gets his attention. And may he get ours today as well. Let's look at verses two and three. It says, there the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. And though the bush was engulfed in flames, it did not burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't the bush burning up? I must go see it. I'll pause right there because this just justifies that for thousands and thousands of years, men have had an infatuation with fire. We have been mesmerized by things burning. In fact, I saw this picture just this week as I was preparing this message. And it's this fire that you can now buy things that'll turn your fire into all different colors. You remember hearing how fire was nature's television? And how television has progressed pretty quickly, but now they have colored fire, colored televisions? It's incredible. I must have stared at this photo for 10 minutes because that's about how long the people were honking behind me. I was fascinated thinking, wow, that is incredibly cool. I remember my wife and I were on a camping weekend trip with some friends out of state. And so we met in Indiana and we said, hey, we were young and dumb, but we said, hey, we're going we're gonna to just rough it. We're going to take care of our own food. We're going to prepare our own meals. And so we get there, we get to our campsite and nature had left us this perfect fire hole from the people there the week before. And we thought that's where we're going to make our food. And so we tell the wives, you get the food prepped and ready. We're going to go make a fire. So we start heading out towards the woods. We make our way out there totally unprepared and we see all the trees and we recognize that uh, all the trees were still attached uh, with their branches still attached and we couldn't get them down. And I had been gifted a pocket knife for that Christmas um, with my name engraved on it. And that really wasn't sufficing to, to take the branch down at this time. So we're pulling and we're tugging and we're sweating and we're grabbing. And we learned what I'm sure the Boy Scouts learned like week one is uh, branches that were attached and alive don't really burn well. 
And so we take it back to the fire and we think, all right, well, the wife starts snickering and commenting and that's motivation for us to use what man has invented to just really get this fire going and we douse that thing in lighter fluid. Your hot dogs taste terrible. We drench it with lighter fluid and it burns as much as you'd want it to for the few seconds that the fluid's on there and then it just dies. And we're a little discouraged, and so we go over to a couple other campsites, and we see what we think is divinely placed uh, leftover wood that has died and dried out. And we start to grab some of it, and by this point, it's nighttime, it's getting dark, and we're taking it back over. We're forgetting the hot dogs. We're moving on to s'mores, like that's what we're going to eat. And we start piling it up, and my friend goes back over with me, and we start to hear some noise ruffling in the wood. And like everybody, we're just fascinated. We're drawn towards it. We start to explore what it could be, looking in there, trying to see what it is. And because we came prepared, we took out our flashlight and we turned it on and we start looking inside there and looking for what the creature is. And sure enough, he says, I think I see the eyeball. And it should have clicked in my mind that nature typically doesn't have one-eyed animals crawling around. Because as I look in, he says, look, there's that pink little circle, and that is not an eyeball. That is the stink hole of a skunk, and we start running. (laughs) And I want to tell you right then and there that unroasted marshmallows really don't make bad s'mores. But we have this natural inclination to see things, to explore things, to be observant of things. But there's times when we haven't had practice, when we're not used to it, it's often awkward, uncomfortable, or not something that we feel we are capable of doing. The same thing happens with Moses. God is calling him to something, but he has to get his attention first. And Moses recognizes that God wants to have this conversation with him. But before he can have this conversation, he's got to get Moses' attention and find out, is he committed? Is he listening? Let's pick up the story here in verse 4. It says this, 4 through 7. It says, when the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush. Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. Man, I wish that skunk would have warned us. Verse 6 says, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering. Moses has this moment on the mountain that is the most pivotal experience of his life. I remember oftentimes watching this played out year after year on television through this iconic movie called The Ten Commandments. Have you seen it before? Take a look at this scene on the screen. I am here. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place where I now stands is holy ground. I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, 
and the God of Jacob. Lord, Lord, why do you not hear the cries of their children in the bondage of Egypt? I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. Therefore I will send thee, Moses, unto Pharaoh, that thou mayst bring my people out of Egypt. Who am I, Lord? that you should send me. How can I lead this people out of bondage? What words can I speak that they will heed? I will teach thee what thou wilt say. When thou hast brought forth the people, they shall serve me upon this mountain. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Now therefore go, and I will be with thee. But if I say to your children that the God of their fathers has sent me, they will ask what is his name, and how shall I answer them? I am that I am. Thou shalt say, I am have sent me unto you. What an iconic scene, and it's what led me to grow up to think that God only spoke in King James Version. <laughs> I remember hearing that voice, Moses, Moses, and just thinking, man, that is God's tone, that's his deep voice. And how it grips Moses' attention. The first thing I want to point out is where this conversation happens. Because I don't think it's coincidental that Moses finds himself in the midst of his mundane job pushing into the wilderness and it says that he goes close to what is called Mount Sinai. And here is Moses looking for the things of God in his world around him. And this burning bush is what gets his attention. And in that moment with the burning bush that gets his attention, not only was he being mentored to have these God sightings, but he was being mentored to be close to where God's presence was known to exist. This Mount Sinai is known as being the mountain of God. And isn't it convenient and non-coincidental that God shows up just where people have experienced him before. That's exactly why we open up our doors to VBS, is that we get our kids to come around. It's a part of our message at child dedication is that we are going to involve our kids in the ministry of be aware of God moving in their life and then that they're comfortable in being in a place where God has shown up before that he'll show up again and that he can speak and desires to talk to each and every one of them. Oh, the importance of having time and what Pastor Dale described in his message a few weeks back as those thin spaces where heaven seems to get close to us and we can converse with God. Some of you today may have shown up and never been in a church before. You may have been watching online and you've never even donned the doors here. But I want to tell you, God has shown up here before. I know there's people that have heard his voice here before. He's spoken to directly before. And if you're looking for God, you've come to a place where he is faithful to show up. You can find the truth of God from this place. And the second thing is, in the midst of showing up in the location and the setting for this conversation for Moses, is the truth that it reveals about God. He desires to converse with us. John tells us that Jesus preached that the, called us sheep, and he said, my sheep will hear my voice, that they will know who I am. 
God desires conversation. He doesn't desire distance. He doesn't desire separation. And the great thing is, he doesn't desire us to climb a mountain to hear from him. That he brought his son and removed the distance so that we can be intimately connected and have a conversation. God desires to have conversations with you. God desires to be in a conversation with you so much so that he's willing to do whatever it takes to get your attention. And maybe this could be the pivotal moment where he has your attention, that he can converse with you directly. You see, God doesn't care if you're in Egypt's palace, he can show up there. He doesn't care if you're in the middle of your Midian, he can show up there. God desires to have your attention. And I think oftentimes there's this uncomfortableness or fear that we bring into those moments. Not sure of what that's going to be like. I want to point out how God approaches Moses in this moment. God doesn't come to Moses and say, Moses, I know of your past. I know the identity struggles that you've had. Moses, I know of the wrongdoings in your life. I saw you kill that Egyptian. I saw you kill that slave labor leader, the guy who was persecuting that Israelite. I saw what you did to him. I've seen you flee from your past. I've seen you leave the grandiose life you had and just lower yourself to being a shepherd. God doesn't call Moses by his past. Friends, I want to tell you something today. The conversation that God has with you is not going to be focused on the difficulties and the failures of your past. The conversation that God wants to have with you is going to be focused and centered on who you are now and the life he wants to give you in your future. God's desire is not to call out the rap sheet and report of your life in the past. His desire is to call out the love and mercy and in grace that extended through Jesus Christ and he wants you to respond to that so that he can use you to free other people that need it. The same way God spoke to Moses, he desires to speak with you in a still calm voice. He desires to converse with you. Are you open to allowing that conversation to happen today? Moses' response to that invitation of conversation is simply, here I am. Here I am. The same response that we see Isaiah say when he is called by God, here I am, Lord, send me. And Moses has questions. What am I supposed to say? How am I supposed to be able to do this? And God says, Moses, if I'm calling you to something, the attention is not going to be on you. It's going to be on me. I think for those of you in this room, God is calling you specifically. There may be areas in your life that God is calling for you to put him on display. There may be moments or locations. It may be in your career. It may be a new career. There may be family members that God is calling for you to bring his message of Jesus Christ into those moments. And all he's asking for you is to play your part and not put you on display. It's not how good you are. It's not the things that you can do. It's not the miracles you can perform. He says, Moses, I just need you to go. And I will take over. And this is the great part of this is God says, I am. Tell them I am. Whatever they needed God to be, he said, I can be that. I am the one who can rescue you. I am the one that can free you. I am the one that can take care of you. I am the one that can provide for you. I am the one that can be there for you. God says, I am is who sent you. For some of you today, that's the message you need to receive. The challenges you faced, the things you wrestle with, the questions you have, God says, I am there for you. I am the answer. I am faithful. I am capable. Put me on display and see what I can do in in through you. 
And so maybe for some of you here today, you'd say, Pastor John, I haven't even started a relationship or a conversation. I've never even done that before. Maybe you're watching online. You say, I'm not even a follower of Jesus. I don't even believe this stuff. I've not accepted this for myself. But I recognize there's something different here that I'm missing something. And I feel that God is calling out to me today. And if that's you, I want to tell you the best thing you can do is say, here I am. I want to offer a time of prayer and then conclude our service here today by just allowing the Lord to speak to you. Not to hear my words anymore, but just to hear from him. Will you bow your heads? Maybe for some of you today, the posture of listening to the Lord is fixating on this fake burning bush up here. Maybe for some of you, the posture of listening to the Lord is kneeling at your chair. Others of you, it may be as Moses, and you recognize God's presence is here right now, and I'm going to take my shoes off and focus in on him. I'm going to pray a prayer of salvation for those that need to receive Jesus Christ, and I'm going to pray that you will hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Tomorrow at 9.30 on Facebook, I'm going to talk about how we hear the Lord and how we decipher his voice. But let's be listening to him in this moment right now. Heavenly Father, you have our attention. We're not fixated on the flames, but we are focused on the Father, you, and your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, I want the person who needs to receive him to say, I said yes today to you to repeat this with me. Father, forgive me of my past, the sins of my mistakes in the past. Give me a brighter future. I receive your son as Lord of my life and I desire to follow after him so I can receive your best for my life on this earth and for all eternity. I believe this and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's take some time now to listen to what God specifically is calling you to do in your life. Let's pray. Jesus, we, uh, 
we admit that in the busyness of life, we often don't take a couple moments to sit and listen to your voice. God, we recognize that you talk to us a lot, but we miss it out because we miss out on it because of the the noise. And so, Father, I pray that just as we took a few moments here to open ourselves up to receive what you have for us, God, that you would continue to speak to us. God, whether we're in this room or watching online, God, that you would show yourself to us and that you would move and that when you do, we would follow. We ask this in the name of Jesus and everyone said, Amen. Amen. Well, go ahead and stand to your feet. And while you're doing that, can we thank Pastor John for a wonderful message today? Straight from God's heart to us. And if you're one of those folks that while he was praying that you said yes to Jesus, um, we want to celebrate that with you. In fact, we have a gift that we'd like to give you. You can come see us down front if you're here in the room or go to one of the new here stations in the lobby. Or if you're watching online, just click the button that says, I said yes, because while we believe uh, a relationship with Jesus is incredibly personal, it's not intended to be kept private. So be sure to tell someone about your decision to follow Jesus. Can we welcome all of those that made that decision today into the family of God? We believe it's the greatest decision you're ever going to make, and so welcome to the family. I want to bless you before you go, uh, so go ahead and put your hands out uh, like this. And uh, the reason we do that is because we believe that God loves his kids and he wants to bless his kids with good gifts. And I'm going to pray a simple blessing over you today because probably I think the greatest blessing we could experience is learning to hear the voice of God. Would you agree with that? So I'm going to pray that over you, and before you leave, don't forget the ushers are in the back with their buckets and sign up for VBS. We have a station out in the lobby for you to do that. But may the Lord bless and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you this week. May you encounter his presence. And as he speaks, may he give you a heart and ears to hear what he's saying, that you would have moments to be quiet and listen, and that you would have feet to take this holy ground wherever you go. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be blessed, church. We love you guys. Go in the grace and peace of our Lord.